Hello, so for uh, this week, we will be discussing two, uh, two parts, no? two important parts on, on the life of Jose Rizal. So the first one will be his exile. Then the second one would be later on atong i-discuss no ang iyang trial and execution. Later na na siya. Okay. For now, uh, kanilang sa ang ato ang i-discuss no. The life in exile of Rizal. Asa man siya ni Addo? Dibalik siya sa Philippines and then he was exiled to the Pitan. And then there we could see, no, he is, uh, he's productive, no, yang pagka productive siyang life. Especially that they said, no, nga, once your end is near, so preparation is siya sayang kamatayun. Hoping that he will be free from accusations. Nagbagong buhay na sana. Kaso naabot lang ang the trial and execution okay so it is we will be dividing this into two the life in exile and the trial and execution of Rizal okay so let's start okay so the life of Jose Rizal has been narrated and talked about in countless academic works from his early childhood up to his life abroad. However, his experience as an exile in the Pitan is often overlooked. When Rizal returned to Manila on June 26, 1892, he was already declared as an enemy of the state because of his novels, The Noli Mitangere and El Filibus Tirismo. And I guess if one could read, no? If you are going to read the novel and then you are on the side of the Spanish colonial government, then might as well we can say that Tonton in Tohana, no? He nasi ay abilidad, nasi ay guts to speak something against the colonial, the colonial government. Similar to this day, makayunta nga baga kayo o ginaong whoever speaks against uh the Philippine government. No. If you side with the government and if you are an apologist to the arraignment of the government and might as well we can say to whoever critiqued or activists trying to say something or politicians or political critics or political analysts or researchers or scholars whatever their achievement may be if they speak a word against the government and then we, we would consider them as Hinay or reading comprehension. I remember that time during the pandemic when I had a quarrel against against someone on, on the Facebook and then he told me that I lack reading comprehension whereas there's something more than reading comprehension. And what have you read? Just Facebook posts post from fake news whereas I am reading researches fact checking from different sources and aside from that one trying to connect you know, trying to connect it with my knowledge on political philosophy and the rest okay so siguro uban nato no if if we try to laugh the jokes or shall I say that we are the jokes? No, we would, we would be called somehow the enemy of the state. Similar to Rizal, after writing his novels, Murasya Og Gikadlukan. And because Gikadlukan, he was considered as the enemy of the state. And I guess, no, the reason why people are hostile or people threaten. It is because they are afraid. For example, we say that you experience no kay hadlok taog bakokang that's why we kill it. Hadlok taog bukog that's why we kill it. But we don't know. We're just threatened, and so we kill it. And Rizal, in this part, they are afraid because of the mind of Rizal, the writings of Rizal, the influence of Rizal, 
know the influence that there might be an uprising because of the influence of Rizal through his novel. And so because of that, uh, had look. Ilang, ilang gi, gi avoid the Rizal. And so he was declared as enemy of the state. Similarly, those journalists you know, trying to speak the truth, those scholars who are threats in quotation to the government are considered enemy of the state or napahimutangan sa presinto. That's why they have the political prisoners and worse, the shutting of their mouth through ending of their death. I mean, ending their lives through death. So his every move was monitored by the Spanish authorities, searching all houses he frequented, he frequented and interrogating the people he knew. Murasia uh, og gi surveillance, no? And it is also relevant today, very through the police and through the intelligence funds, though, they say. Uh, further, no, they would use Facebook. They would, they would access Facebook, no, in trying to monitor the state of the government. Despite this, on July 3, 1892, Rizal and his friends were still able to establish the La Liga Filipina. The group's safe house was the house Doroteo Honghongko located in Tondo, Manila. So the La Liga, a social reformist group, Okay, sorry for the interruption. Sorry for the interruption. Huh? Okay, let's continue. So the La Liga Filipina, a social reformist group advocating social reforms through legal means. Okay, it was considered a threat by the Spanish authorities, which led Rizal Rizal's arrest on July 6, 1892. The then Governor General Yolohio Dispujol ordered the arrest as a political move to appease the friars. He publicized in Graveta de Manila that the grounds for Rizal's arrests were anti-Catholic and anti-friar stance which manifested in his writing. Okay, on satong accusation ni Dispol, it's about his anti-Catholic and anti-friar writings. And then I guess this poll uh, used no the opportunity para plus points no para pabida siya sa iha mga friar bosses. Okay, remember what's the name of the group? Okay, La Liga Filipina, a social reformist group. Okay, it's through legal means, but still considered a threat. Nowadays, no, there are lawyers, there are, there are journal, journalists just practicing their rights and just doing the legal means. But the problem is, gibawsan sila og illegal nga means through violence. After his arrest, Rizal was deported to the Pitan, a province in Zamboanga, a place far from his family and friends so that communication with them would be difficult. Mura siya ang gipreso, pero wala lay bars, no? Wala lay presohan. He, he just stayed there without his, I mean, far from his family, far from his friends. And how could, Im how could we imagine that during this time, there, there was no Facebook and text messages no maybe writing letters to his loved one uh, that's the only way to communication and that we filter pagyud no sa sa male person sa katong mga postman so wala privacy and then maabot siya for how many months okay further the spanish authorities believed that sending Rizal to the Pitan would make his life miserable. Magantos daw siya nganto. However, Rizal proved them wrong. In fact, 
being an exile was considered a very fruitful episode of his life. So nagtuo sila nga naganto si Rizal sa dapitan but Rizal no making the best out of the worst considered a very fruitful episode of his life. Might as well in life no there there are times when our enemies or those people who hated us for no reason or just for envious envious reasons maybe they would hope for our misery but ilatang palisulisuron etc our task you know is not to avenge but to make the best out of the worst experience or situation that they gave us as for Rizal being exiled no Dili Siaganan to name it exile but he would like to name it as a productive means no while kita gilisod-lisod ta sa pandemic but let us not forget no that we should not call this one as a a misery but an opportunity for us to move forward to encourage us to do something out of this worst to produce the best while in the pit and resolve focused on serving the people and society through his civic works medical practices agricultural projects and education he also devoted his time to improving his artistic and literary skills rizal however did not forget what he liked doing the most writing letters to his friends in europe especially to ferdinand blumentritt and reinhold rost now, there was also a a commentary on that stating that mas daghan pa daog letter si Rizal ni Blumentritt kaysa ni kaysa yang uyab kaysa yang uyab ani i'm not sure kalimot ko Josephine Bracken eh, Bracken okay and then i think it just nagpasabot eh, lang siya nung wala siya time for love life i guess but conversing with his teacher or with his with a, with a guidance i guess nagpas nagpamatuod lang nino that he wanted to become better gihapon okay uh, i guess it was also during this time where he uh, when he crafted no a sculpture about about the dog no depicting a mother's love what else it was in this time when Rizal discovered two species no of frogs i guess and it is no it is recorded in the scientific names Rizalia something okay Rizal also became more interested in studying the lifestyle values and beliefs of the cultural minorities since he was living with their community he realized that they should not be excluded from the narrative of the Philippine society in his day-to-day -day interactions with them Rizal understood that they were important in the formation of a national consciousness cultural minorities okay maybe in our time the indigenous people maybe in our time the poor those uneducated Rizal sees them no as an as as if you will as, as something that is important in the formation of national consciousness the minorities mga marginalized uh we call that one minorities because only sila ang mga sinalikway or layo or those people living in remote remote areas for example mga tao sa bukid no so what who are the minorities no in our pandemic today okay going back let us relate it to our pandemic life no in result during his his exile uh discovered many things finished different sculptures okay and how about us uh, my question is what have you finished in this pandemic okay i hope many of us developed our love for the family our love for responsibility nga nangitatag trabaho 
or loved of sacrificing convenience no para lang makaskuil na bisag online class ningita og signal for example okay it's up to you and how about who are these minorities uh, i guess for me in the in the time of pandemic katong mga narekaya the middle class uh, who are who can afford to have online classes every day who can afford uh, just sitting in their houses and then gaining money i guess those are the majorities now in this time how about those minorities those people the frontliners for example those people nga dili afford to go online class every day uh what else those people living in the mountains nga wala signal cannot access the internet and so having a hard time having a difficulty accessing online classes those people nga wala gadgets those people nga hinay internet for example okay to be result in our time today for example as a teacher they would consider the cultural minorities they would consider those who are the least the oppressed the poor for example okay in the course of of his exile the spanish authorities offered to pardon him if he would retract his proclamations against the church but rizal did not yield he was still very vocal in his contempt towards the practices of the catholic church jesuit priests put in a lot of effort so that rizal would pre- perform religious rites and submit himself to confession he engaged in scholarly debates about religion with fray pablo pastels the superior of the jesuit mission in the philippines this exchange of heated arguments further revealed the antichrist rizal his disdain for the abuses committed by the friars just like the previous attempts of the friars fray pastels tried his best to make rizal consider his stance against the church but it was all in vain there is no there is a book that i guess na still i record i am still going to find it I'm, i'm going to look for it and then might as well share this one to you no the conversation of pastels and rizal meta makita na ko i'm i'm also going to contact siguro my rizal teacher when i was in college kay na to si ay uh conversation ni rizal ug ni pastel sa ato pagkaron basic screenshot no okay no 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 nail night tao no? ay jesuit scholar siguro uh kept no archived their conversation and so until now no daghag debates is rizal really a mason and so anti christian anti christ well uh as as what i've said no there still there are still debates concerning that one because after pilaka years there were na ini tumaw no there there na ini exists na letter daw to an archbishop that rizal retracted back to to the catholic faith okay as for me i'm not i'm not really sure as to that one but uh but one thing's for sure no i think the question here is not about rizal being an antichrist or not but what could be the reason no no nabuhatan ni rizal is it because of the abuses no of the of the spanish friars for example and look how rizal rizal trying to he he was he was he was asked no to nambaliwala on lang ang ang iyang gipangsuwat and i guess the rizal having the principle to to claim his works to claim the to claim the the principles the ideas niya yung gisuwat no firm siya in integrity siya sa yang yang pagka yang yang mangisuwat yang mga ideology even if the spanish authorities offered him no to to say that i joke rato yang gipangsulti and it's, it's something about the words no nga pwede ma control sa state nga pwede ma control sa government there are in fact no uh fixed renderies as they would say fake surrenders 
that would somehow destroy you know, the the image of a certain group trying to 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 criticize the government and it's so funny that that the surrender is da, okay wala wala sad mismo kaila ang ang katong gipang blame ato now, if you want to ask them about no you may you may ask me on messenger or on facebook comment about the story okay now, it was during this exile that Rizal met Josephine Bracken Bracken accompanied her blind <coughs> foster father George Taufer who came to seek Rizal's help about his cataract. Rizal and Bracken instantly fell in love. Sana all. Okay. Dr. Pio Valenzuela was sent as an emissary by Andres Bonifacio, the leader of La Catipunan, to seek Rizal's opinion and approval of an armed rebellion against the Spanish authorities. Rizal was outrightly opposed to the idea of an armed rebellion for him. The Filipinos did not need to wage a bloody revolution to gain independence. He believed that Filipinos were not yet united and fully educated. The Katipunan lacked the machinery to defeat the Spaniards. At this point, Rizal was hoping for concessions and reforms from Spain. <coughs> I guess Rizal is trying to hold back now. He is in the in the point of he was accused of many charges and what if he's he says yes no to this to this to this opinion no, of Andres Bonifacio and I guess somewhat dagdag siya of accusations As instead of saying that dili siya nagpaluyo sa revolution uh nanigurado na lang siya nag nagpanagang na lang siya no nga dili siya mo 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 oppose sa hindi siya mo tugot sa maong katipunan na armed revolution siguro nagho pa si Rizal no nga ma free siya from from that imprisonment from that accusations okay the Katipunan lacked the machinery to defeat or or not no the Filipinos Siguro even in the later part we see in the movie General Luna okay makita na to kung sa ka, ka divided ang Filipinos depende sa treatment sa sa nagpaluyo nila the state okay and they are not yet educated they don't know the struggle. They don't have that consciousness, that national awareness, na unta na mapossess nila, no, to overthrow successfully the government. I guess Friere has has a word to this one. No? My my favorite philosopher, he said that uh, we need to be educated as an oppressed to overcome those people. And to overthrow the burgis, the burgis, the root cause of our suffering economically. And there he met Bracken. Okay, now, now we go to the trial and execution of Rizal after his the, after his exile. So, sa minik na no? Exile naman ta siya. If wala na sawat nga rea, I'll just, I will just, okay, I'll just tell you about what happened. So, Jose Rizal is regarded as one of the martyrs who sacrificed their lives for the attainment of the rights of the Filipinos and of Philippine freedom. Martyrs usually suffer due to their religious faith and beliefs, but a martyr can also suffer persecution and death for advocating, renouncing, and refusing to advocate or renounce a belief as demanded by an external party or the state or the government. Rizal is truly a martyr for demonstrating an unwavering commitment to free the Filipinos from colonial bondage. Pagpalingkawas sa mga katawang Pilipino, gikan sa sa panako pagsakop sa nasud nga Espanyol.
results, death was considered as an impactful episode in Philippine history because it was not only the death of a martyr but also the birth of reforms in society and transformation of the lives of Filipinos. Rizal was charged and put to death for what his enemies considered as subversion. He was also accused of forming an organization that posted a severe threat to the existing social order at the time, maybe the Katipunan. Even the supposed trial where Rizal could have defended himself was a hoax. There was allegedly a preliminary investigation that ran for five days. After the investigation, Rizal was said to have been informed of the charges against him before a judge advocate just maybe was in sangan lang no nga he trials siya due process of law in quotation marks okay uh wala man nasuwat nga ri but Rizal daw planned no to go to Cuba as a voluntary marang military doctor no sa war nga to and then wala siya tugti supposedly mo to may tabo no but on his way to Cuba, Gidakopsia, because because of this mga accusations and sukadato, wala siya ka to Cuba, wala siya ka balikog dapitan. So he was directly, gikwa uh, siya diritso. So Rizal was presented with two kinds of evidence, a documentary evidence and testimonials, which he could not refute. Speaking of kung puno ka ng mga trumped up charges, no, no, it, the, the government has, has the habit to to put to to plant evidences, di ba? Uh, nasikat na sa Facebook, no, ang magtanim ay dibiro wherein the policemen or men in arms would would shoot a civilian, an individual and then just for personal interest, for example, or para lang silang quota, for example, and then ila din natamnan, no, evidence. Uh, Kano mga drug-related killings, drug-related nga mga cases, and then they would say nga nanlaban, they are holding a gun, but they are, they are just they are just holding the same gun, different suspects, but gun, asa man dyan agi ka, no? Mm, what else? Uh, Trump some charges, kidnapping. Even if they're doing an evacuation, an evacuation program for the indigenous and the minorities, for example, tingana. A result also, uh, also some he could not refute, but katung mga sakasak ng charges, of course, was against him. No? There are two kinds of evidence a documentary evidence and testimonials which he could not refute. The documentary evidence included but not limited to the following. The letters he wrote to the propagandistas and to his family and the letters he received from them. The poem Condiman and the Masonic document honoring Rizal's patriotic services. Also found as documentary evidence was a letter, letter signed by Dimasalang or Rizal which stated that he prepared a safe refuge for Filipinos who suffered persecution from the Spanish authorities. An anonymous and undated letter to the editor of a Hong Kong telegraph censuring the banishment of Rizal to the Pitan. A transcript of speech, Pinkian, the name of Emilio Jacinto in a reunion of the Katipunan. A transcript of the speech of Tik Tik and a poem by Laong Laan titled him no atalisay so here are the evidences no and then the question is nganong naman nganong makita man giapon is it because of the investigation na by warrant in our time today no need warrant diretso sulod wala warrant of arrest makita lang nga wakay nagmask bisag imo pa nang tugaran dakpon okay for example ana so testimonies against results we are given by Martin Constantino, Aguedo del Rosario, Jose Reyes, wala ko kailanin nila. 
even Rizal had not met most of the people included in the list. So how could this be a testimony? Now how could this be witnesses of Rizal's life having them not not able to meet Rizal, no? Or even Rizal not able to meet them personally. So Rizal was immediately sent to trial and held in prison after the evidences were reviewed. Alongside his incarceration, his properties were seized as indemnity and he had to pay 1 million pesos instead of civilian lawyer, an army office who Luis Tavil de Andrade represented Rizal in court. I guess Andrade is not that mean, Sigurano. But uh, there, there are also, uh, Tavil also uh, played an important role in the execution of Rizal. He stood as a lawyer, although he's not a lawyer. No. But he represented Rizal in the court. Uh, okay. His properties were seized. There are also stories no, nga, when they have a warrant against a person. Hindi malikayan nga. Mawagtangan o butang kining someone someone nga ilang gipriso. <clears throat> During the trial, Rizal defended himself when he said that he did not question the jurisdiction of the court, but he had nothing to admit on the charges against him as well as on the declarations of the witnesses who testified against him. What he only needed to clarify was the charge that he dealt with political matters while in exile. He never did. No? I guess he wanted to change his life not during his exile, hoping no nga ma free from charges na siya. Despite all the pleadings, the court voted for Rizal to be sentenced to death. Rizal spent his last 24 hours in his prison cell. During his last hours, he was visited by his family and wrote a letter to his second brother, Blumintrit. Then in the morning of December 30, 1896, Rizal sat on his walk from Fort Santiago to Bagumbayan Square, where he eventually faced his death. Up to the last minute at Fort Santiago, Rizal defied orders from his captors as he was instructed to face the sea and turn his back against the firing squad. But Rizal wanted to do otherwise. Instead, he faced the firing squad to show his innocence of the charges thrown at him. But the Spanish authorities forced him to face backwards and shot him at the back instead of his head. The shot at the back allowed him to turn his body sideways and fell on the, on the ground with the face upward. Rizal's last word was that of Jesus Christ was consumatum est. It is finished. After 39 years from Rizal's death, one significant issue that came out in 1935 was the argument about Rizal's retraction of all his statements against the Catholic Church and the Spanish government by a document. A handwritten retraction allegedly written by Rizal. Up to this point, the, authentic the authenticity of the document has been a subject to debate. <coughs> I guess I'll be presenting also known the Adios Patria Dorada later. Okay, this poem is written as Murag, a farewell message na no, ni Rizal. So, some facts about Rizal's execution. 6.30 a.m., December 30, 1896, Rizal began his march from his prison cell in Fort Santiago to his execution site, Bagumbayan. So, only one soldier had a live bullet. Ang uban, way bala. Okay, fuego. Fuego in Spanish, fire in English, fire. Tira pang. Muna, ano, katang sa lupang hinira nga, nga video na yung fuego. Okay, fire. Yan matay din sa Rizal. So, a descendant of one of the executioners, Adolfo Pastor Quitcuti, said that the captain of the guards put only one live bullet in one of the eight Filipino soldiers 
in the firing squad. This is to ease their guilt knowing that Rizal was innocent. Yes, there were eight Filipinos with Remingtons in the firing squad. If we are going to ask and say nagbatay ni Rizal, uh, well, of course, no? Primarily the state, pero kinsa may nagpusil, eight Filipinos, pero wak tagibaw asan ni nga walo. Ang aton hibawan, sa walo kapusil, naaray o sa kabukbala. Pero nagpaluyo ni nga mga Pilipino kay mga Spanish soldiers said nung akong digan isla mo pusil sila mismo ang mupusil sa Pilipino nga wala ni pusil okay a dog serving as a mascot run around Rizal's lifeless body whining don't believe there he was okay we know this one consumatum as that is finished Okay, uh, let me first stop the recording and then I'll be presenting to you, to you the multimodios. Okay, here's the Spanish, no, the original, the original version. Multimodios. I remember, no, during our Spanish class in when I was in college. Oh, wala ni namo gimemorize, pero gibasa ni namo. There were three of us. And then we were wearing our black sotana and then we had this no la ra nagbasa rami ani gi project sa loyo ang ang kani ang mong gibasa no then nagsabot rami sa unsay basaho namo walay practice diretso basa okay adios patria dorada region de sol querida perla del mar de oriente nuestro perdido eden adarte voy alegre la triste mus Día vida, efuera más brillante, más fresca, más florida. También por ti la diera, la diera por tú también. En campos de batalla, lonchando con delirio, otros te dan sus, vid sus vidas sin dudas, sin pesar. El sitio, nada importa, tipres, laurel o lirio. Pedalza o campo abierto combate o cruel martirio lo mismo es si lo piden la patria y el, y el hogar <laughs> dito kang sabot no uh, okay I'll read the English the English one I want you to reflect no imagine imagine Rizal writing this one knowing that tomorrow mamatay na siya imagine yourself uh, writing this one kay kebaw kang aog mamamatay na ka simba ko lang but Okay, let's put this one into the context, no? Rizal writing the poem. Kay mamatay na si Ogma. Okay. Last farewell. Farewell. Dear fatherland, climb of the sun caressed. Pearl of the Orient seas our Eden lost. Gladly now I go to give thee this faded life's best. And were it brighter, fresher, or more blessed, still would I would, would I give it thee, nor count the cost. On the fields of battle, mid the frenzy of fight, others have given their lives without doubt or heed. The place matters, not cypress or laurel or lily white, scaffold or open plain, combat or martyrdom's plight is ever the same. To serve our home and country's need. I die just when I see the dawn break through the gloom of night to herald the day. And if colors is lacking, my blood thou shalt take. Poured out at need for thy dear sake to die with its crimson, the waking ray. My dreams, when life first opened to me. My dreams, when the hopes of youth beat high, were to see thy loved face, O gem of the Orient Sea. From gloom and grief, from care and sorrow free, no blush on thy brow, no tear in thine eye. Dream of my life, my living and burning desire. All hail, Christ, the soul that is now to take flight. All hail and sweet, it is for thee to expire, to die for thy sake, 
that thou mightst aspire and sleep in thy bosom eternity's long night. If over my grave some day thou ceased to grow in the grassy sod a humble flower, draw it to thy lips and kiss my soul so, while I may feel on my brow in the cold tomb below the touch of thy tenderness, thy breath's warm power. Let the moon beam over me soft and serene, let the dawn shed over me its radiant flashes, let the wind with sad lament over me keen, and if on my cross a bird should be seen, let it thrill, there is a hymn of peace to my ashes. Let the sun draw the vapors up to the sky, and heavenward in purity bear my tardy protest. Let some kind soul over my un untimely fate sigh, and in the still evening a prayer be lifted on high from thee, O my country, that in God I may rest. Pray for all those that hapless have died, for who have suffered the unmeasured pain, for our mothers that bitterly their vows have cried, for widows and orphans, for captives by virtues, by torture tried, and then for thyself that redemption thou mayst gain. And then the dark night wraps the graveyard around with only the dead in their vigil to see. Break not my repose or the mystery profound. And perchance thou mayst hear a sad hymn resound. This I, O my country, raising a song unto thee. And even my grave is remembered no more, unmarked by never a cross nor a stone. Let a plow, let the plow sweep through it, the spade turn it over, that my ashes, my carpets, early floor before into nothingness at last they are blown. Then will oblivion bring to me no care, as over thy values and plains I sweep, throbbing and cleansing, cleansed in thy space and air, with color and light, with song and lament I fare, ever repeating the faith that I keep, my fatherland adored, that sadness to my sorrow lends, Beloved Filipinas, hear now my last goodbye. I give thee all parents and kindred and friends. For I go where no slave before the oppressor bends, where faith can never kill and God resigns ever on high. Farewell to you all from my soul torn away, friends of my childhood in the home dispossessed. Give thanks that I rest from the wearisome, wearisome day. Farewell to thee, two sweet friends that lightened my way. Beloved creatures all, farewell. In death there is rest. Fuego! Kung sumatom es da yun, then the death of Rizal. Okay, so I guess that would be all. And thank you very much for your time. Please don't forget to pray for Rizal's soul. Amen. <laughs>